crafty friends. This is the Paper Chef here. Welcome to part four of the Seaside Bay Workshop Series. Today we're going to create this really cute shaker box. It has seashells and can, it has some sequins in it. And it has, you are a pearl, rare and precious. I could have stamped also underneath here, but I'm going to just tell you why I didn't because I didn't, I thought that these shells were just cuter and the shape of those were fine because there's lots of sequins in there. All right, so let's get started. I want to show you where this is in the catalog, and we're going to move on from there. This is part of the By the Bay collection by Stampin' Up. The entire suite of products can be purchased as one. The designer series paper has foiling on one side. It's really gorgeous. It's called Specialty Designer Series Paper, and it's a six-by-six six pack of 48 sheets. And pearls, and there's ribbon, and there's... Stamps and dies, and the whole thing can be purchased for 87 the entire sweet collection. And not only that, right now it is celebration time. So when you purchase $50 or more at my Stampin' Up! store, here's the address of my store, you get a free celebration item. We'll be doing some die cutting, and we're going to be using the, the larger stamp cut and emboss machine. But do check out my video about how you can get the smaller one for free as part of your starter kit. This is the larger one, so I'm going to go ahead and open up the front and back of that one. All right, so what you need, let's let's make the elements that we need first. Let's start with that. Then we're going to make the box last because we're going to build it up. I'm going to roll up my sleeves, literally roll up my sleeves, and we're just going to get a piece of basic white, a scrap of basic white, and we're going to go ahead and cut out. Well, it's better, I think, that we stamp on it later. Let's just go ahead and cut it out, okay? Well, we'll just do all the die. We'll just do some die cutting. We're going to get the plates. And you, this die cutting sandwich, this is the machine. I'm gonna put the die cutting sandwich together. Okay, base plate. That's this larger plate. See how thick it is on the side? This plate number one. Plate number two is the thin die adapter. Pla one plate number three, this is the top one because it's not very scratched. And another plate number three on the bottom. So we have a plate number three on the bottom. And then we have a plate number three on top. So go ahead and put your paper on. Just put your paper down. We're going to go ahead and cut out some of that, so like some, some little clams. And then I have all these little scraps here, so we'll just run this through a couple times, cut out some little shells and things. So we'll put this one through. Now that pattern, if did you notice this? It has a seashell foiled pattern on it. So it goes really well with these larger dies where you put them right over the pattern, and you get a pattern cut out right in the shell, right in the right spot. It doesn't really matter where you put it. It just gives you more texture. So let's do one like that. I'm just going to kind of throw these little scraps down. And we're going to put one there and do a little seaweed. This is good for seaweed. We get some seaweed. And we'll do another little seaweed on that one. And here, let's do a shell on that one because it looks good. And let's take this little guy and we'll do a couple little shells up on there. And that's enough for our little platform right now. I have loads of extra shells made for this box and seaweed. But I just wanted to show you how I go about cutting that. And these are just all the different scraps I pulled out that we've been using this, this little piece here. We made some sand with it. Do stick around to the end because I'm going to show you. I like to use the flat one for the top. I'm going to show you all the projects we created so far in parts one, two, and three. We've created boxes and cards. And I even created another card using the Warm Welcome Bundle. It's not going to be featured in this series because it's something that's using another stamp and die set, but I do want to show you that project because last month in our we did the Warm Welcome Bundle on YouTube as part of our series. So check out how the, you get these little shells and the little texture you get on them. How cool is that, right? Now, we don't know if we need to run this through again. Like later, we might need to make some more dies. Just go ahead and poke them out or just drop. You can either drop them and the stuff falls out of them or just poke them out with the little pokey. And I say pokey tool, that's your take your pick tool. So we have some seaweed, we have some dyes. I've cut some of them out of the mother of pearl. That was that came in your kit. I do workshop kits that are pretty epic. Right now the registration is open. If you get my newsletter, if you don't get my newsletter, please write to me and I'll send it to you. But registration is open for the Easter Bunny kit and that's gonna be epic. That's what's coming on next week, we're doing it. Okay, we're gonna use Knight of Navy. We're going to open this up. The reason I'm not going to ink around the edges yet is because if it doesn't work out and we don't stamp it right, then we're just going to run another shape through and try again or flip it over and try again. So we're going to use this stamp, which I've been using for most of this. 
whole series. You are a pearl rare and precious. Heartfelt sympathy we did last week. We did made three sympathy cards. Or actually, I made one, and then we made two together. And then thank you, I'm going to be using a lot as well. Use that on the boxes. Well, no, I think I used this little one on the boxes because it's so cute and small. Well, this, this little guy fits right in there. So we're going to put that on a stamping block. Go ahead and put it flat side up and mount it. And don't ever stamp straight onto your little clam. Always, like, test it first on your, on your mat to make sure that you have a good, clean image before you stamp it onto your little clam. And then stamp it, hold it. And I'm using the part of the clam that's not textured. Ooh, I'm happy, cause I'm happy. All right, I love when my stamps come out right. All right, now we're gonna close. We don't need the Knight of Navy anymore. And we're going to then take the petal pink, put some ink on the edge of your stamping block, the other side, of course, and put a little bit of, oh, this is really dried out. Uh, put a little petal pink, there we go. Little petal pink on here, on your little blending brush. These are the mini blending brushes. And just go around the edge. And by the way, these little, these little guys have hinges on them. So when you see the projects I made later, I used the hinges on these little clams. And we put the little pearl inside the clam. We used this side as the top. We used the textured side. But we're not going to, we're going to chop that side off. We don't need that side. We're only using the flat side because that's, I realized, I was thinking the other day, I said, oh, there's no place to stamp our sentiments. Usually, whenever you get a die set, there's a place to stamp your sentiments. And then I, I realized, well, we could be stamping inside the pearl. I mean, inside the clam. Okay, so we want that little, that's going to be our sentiment for our box. Goody, goody. Now, if you want to also stamp the little, the little shells inside of this, you can do that too. But I didn't think it was necessary because of the little sequins. And you have sequins in your kit, so you're all good on that. All right, so that's good. I think we have enough die cutting done. We'll even use this piece to so take any leftover ink and just sort of do that. Just if you want to put a big shell in the background, give it some texture. I know my camera's shaking all over the place. I shouldn't have, let me move this away from my table. I have a tripod, right, that's touching my table. And if I, if I make it so, the tripod, there we go, doesn't touch the table. Now it's, it hopefully stops shaking in a minute. Before it was shaking every time I, every time I touched the table. I think that's a little better, won't make you so dizzy. These are all things that's taken me years to figure all this out on YouTube. Little incremental changes. You should have seen how pathetic it was when I started. But we all like the craft, so it's all good. All right, now we're ready for the next stage of this little project, which is taking our little trimmer and making the pieces that we need for our little box. So you're going to go ahead and take, let's just start with the bottom of the box and go ahead and chop two six-inch pieces, and then we'll, we'll cut a smidgen off one later. So just go ahead and get your black cardstock. It comes in 12 by 12 pieces. And your black cardstock also comes in eight and a half by 11 pieces from Stampin' Up. I'm just using the 12 by 12 pieces. We'll worry about trimming one of these for the lid and one for the bottom a little bit later. Because let's do these pieces now. All right, so what you want to use is I sent you in your kit some of this really cool paper called uh, Waves of the Ocean, I believe it was called. So you want to take these pieces and we're going to do... We're going to take the petal pink piece because petal pink is the is really nice light color and it contrasts and it goes beneath the other piece from this kit and I'm going to use that as the bottom. So we're going to do three and a quarter and you're just going to go ahead and make a square. Three and a quarter by three and a quarter. It's okay, a little piece of that calypso coral hangs out there. That's really nice. Hopefully, okay, three and a quarter square. Then you're going to take this piece of the waves and you're going to make a piece that's three, three inches. And I like to figure out like, make sure some waves are showing because it looks cool with the waves. So let's do three inch square. I think, I think it's already three inches long. So we'll do three inch square. And we have a couple of those. Hmm. One of them looks like more of a three. Okay. That one looks pretty good. Let's see, this one looked a little bit smaller. Okay, this is it. Three inch square. Okay, good. So now you have this, and that's going to be for our box. I'll be writing this all down when I move stuff off the table. Now, we need a piece of black. We need to take this extra piece of black. Well, it doesn't have to be black. 
It can be, it can just be an extra piece of this, but we don't want to waste our designer series paper, right? That's what cardstock's for. Probably use a piece of cheaper cardstock and go a little bit less than three inches here because I want to reinforce this little panel. So we're just a smidgen less because if you try to make a shaker box, right, and you don't put a little piece of cardstock behind it, this, just make it a little bit smaller, it's going to be droopy. Droopy meaning this will be hard to hold up even with the plastic on it. It's going to be hard to hold up. All right, now keep your trimmer out. I can talk about box making in just a second. I want to make sure we have all our pieces. I have to go through everything in my head here so we have all the pieces we need. Now, we're going to, do, we're going to need to do some more die cutting with the shells. So we'll come back to the rest of the box. And I want to move this out of the way. So they're going to take, I'm just going to die cut. I'm going to take this. I'm going to open up my platform again. And because I'm going to put the shells, I'm going to take these little shells and we're just going to, don't glue this together yet. Just kind of put it like that, right? Put the pieces together and put the shells in a couple spots like there. We'll find the other shell in just a moment. So we need to just cut holes through this to make our little, now don't cut holes through the pink piece or the petal, the petal pink, right? Don't cut holes through that. That's going to be the bottom. Okay, we need two shells. So do something like that. Kind of tilt them. They're going to be the holes for our shaker box. And while we're here, we never waste a good crank. Let's just see what we can cut out. Let's see. Can we cut out some cute little shells or seaweed here? There's always something to cut out, right? There. I'm just going to always cut out something. Can you see that? I just threw those on there because I'm cranking this through anyhow. And so now we can glue the two pieces together because we've already cut the holes in there. But we didn't want to get glue on our dies. So we've made our little window. We also have extra black shells if we need black shells, but the black ones don't look really look as good, but they're, I mean, they're still cool, right? And you can use the blue ones for your other projects. So now we can glue these parts together. All right, now get out, get out the, get out this glue, and let's put the glue on the smaller piece. Okay, let's make sure it's the top. Hold on, when you do this, make sure you do. Yeah, make sure you're putting the glue on the top part of the black. Okay, you don't have to glue them together too well because this is just holding these two pieces together. Well, I mean, you can you can glue a little bit on the edge if you want, but. It's not gluing it onto the box itself. It's just gluing these two pieces together. Okay, put your finger in there and just sort of make sure that they're exactly even. And all I did that for, and you could use any scrap of paper, was to reinforce the lid of the box. It's going to be holding up the plastic and everything. So it's, it, you don't want this to droop. And I, when I try it with basic cardstock, it droops. All right. Now, we're ready for the trimmer one more time and talk about box making. So when you make a box, and I'll show you what's in this box later, you need the you need the boxes, to, you need the measurements to be the same for the top and the bottom, except that the bottom piece that you start with always needs to be a smidgen smaller than the top piece so that you can get the lid to fit over the bottom. And that's in this case where we have the same, now it's different if you have like a different size lid, but in this case where we have the same size lid as the bottom, we can't start with two six-inch pieces. It won't work. You need to take a smidgen off one of them. And a smidgen is defined as one sixteenth of an inch. So remember we cut this six inches before? I told you to cut it six inches. Now you're going to move it over to five and fifteen sixteenths of an inch. And I'll show you what the smidgen looks like. That's the smidgen. And you need to do that off both sides, a sixteenth of an inch. Flip it around. Five and 15 sixteenths of an inch. Okay, we're done with the smidgens. Oops, that one got a little funky here. Let's do it again. It's that one. I could have got a better smidgen than that. Oops, that's as big as it goes. All right, so let's see. It's a little frayed. It's a little frayed. Here, let's do, let's see if I have the other piece of cardstock. Hmm. Okay, let's see what I have here. Yeah, I'm mean, just going to see it. If it did it, if it did it. Oh, no, it was fine. It did it. So can you see that? 
You see, it's a smidgen smaller and a smidgen smaller. Okay, I like that. I'm, I'm happy with it. Oh, no, this side's not a smidgen smaller. I need to just move it over and just do it again. I'm just going to move it a little bit further. Because it just wasn't cutting enough a piece. All right, so now... All right, that's good. That's good. See that? Smidgen on each side. Now, you can either use your scoring blade. You have a scoring thing as part of your Stampin' Up! trimmer. But in our case, we're going to use this Simply Scored. Okay, we're not going to use the scoring tool on the trimmer because I don't like using that one. And I always say use the best tool for the job, right? Best tool for the job is the Simply Scored. I request, or I suggest, I don't request, I don't request anything. You guys have your own free will. I suggest that if, you get, if you're going to get my starter kit, that you get a Stampin', a Simply Scored and a Stampin' Trimmer to have in your crafting collection because this is great for making boxes. And all I'm doing is scoring the same for both boxes, the, both the top and the bottom. I've scored, I scored at one and a quarter inches, one and a quarter inches. But the only difference was... Notice this, when I, I did it, but this one was a smidgen smaller. The bottom is going to fit, the top's going to fit over the bottom because of the fact that I scored them both the same, but I started with two size, two different sizes of paper. And that's how this works. Now, what I did is I flipped it over. So when you score down, you have a valley, meaning you, you get into the groove with your little scoring tool. This is called a stylus, and that's called a valley when you score down. And then when you... So you're scoring a groove into the cardstock. But when you flip it over, you and then you flip it back, this is called a mountain. So you score down, make the valley, and then you burnish all the edges, making little mountains. So next you want to do, so we do this to all the sides. And now you could do this part together or separate. Depending on if you want to save time, you could get these exactly lined up. But I just think it's easier to do one at a time. Plus, I think it's relaxing. I'm going to turn my light down a little bit. It's a little bright, bright, bright. Okay, so here we go. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking this and I'm, I'm doing what's called mitering the edges by making little slivers in all the little grooves. So I find that it's easier just to make all the pieces of your boxes, but then to glue them together and do this part later while I'm watching TV and things because you can do this while sitting down. And we've made boxes in this channel so many times, both with the Scan and Cut, using a program called Template Maker, using our own Canvas Workspace designs where we create them from scratch which I teach about in my Boxes and Envelopes course. Or, and I'm just kind of, it doesn't matter where I do this, I'm just kind of making like the letter H here. And we've done it with different, so we've done it in our workshop series. Almost every time in the workshop series, I teach you how to make a 3D item of something or other. We've already done a few 3D items in this series. So we have lots going on. And then next month is Easter Bunny, like I said. So please get a hold of me. It's in my VIP group to sign up for my Easter Bunny workshop kit. I send it out in my newsletter. And I'll send it out one more as a reminder if you want to get on my newsletter. I don't go advertising it a lot with videos, my workshop kits, because they are limited. And it's not an evergreen thing where I can't really leave it up there. So what you need now is a clothespin. A clothespin will help you hold this together while it's drying. You're going to get some glue and just put some glue on your flaps. And it doesn't matter if this is the top or the bottom. I don't even know if it's the top or the bottom. Because you're going to find out later if it goes, if it actually shuts, one side will shut and it's the top, we'll go over the bottom, that's all. So you're going to put those like that, and it holds it there, and then you hold the other two, unless you have four closed pins. Just gotta hold it for a few seconds. It's just acting as your extra hand. And the reason it's good to use liquid glue when you make the boxes is because 
then if if you need to like rearrange the size of the box a little bit, then it'll give you a little bit of wiggle room for your boxes. So you see why I mitered the edges? So that means the reason I did that is so that the sides don't stick out. Okay, we need our clothespins back. Come back to me. All right, there we go. Come back here. And I'll hold these for a second. So this is how you do it. This is how we do it. Now you see like that's what, so this part, because we mitered the edges, these don't stick out the sides and stuff. Pretty cool. I'll show you what's in the box later. All right, that's all. That's all there is to it. Let's figure out which one's the top, which one's the bottom. Okay, let's see. It's a little, it's a little iffy. That looks like the bottom to me. You know, I started out with the smidge. Yep, that's the bottom to me. But that's why, that's why you have to kind of use the glue because it, it um, the glue will help loosen before it gets. Because if you if you're too tight with your glue, it'll make the bottom and you know the top really tight. All right, so good. Now we can write down the measurements and finish off this project. All right. Find the glue. Putting the glue back. This is my friend. Michelle makes these 3D. 3D glue holders. Pretty cool. All right. Hello, B. Pre from Georgia. Nice to see you. Oops. Okay. Top is six inches by six inches. Five is 15 sixteenths of an inch. By five and fifteen sixteenths of an inch, and meaning you're just taking a smidgen off the bottom. Okay, so that's that part. Now we got the uh, that was cardstock, by the way. All right, hello, Louise Cole loves this paper. This paper is gorgeous. Hello, Linda from Stamp Cut and Create. Oh, good. I'm glad you used some, this for sympathy cards. They are just gorgeous. I didn't send my sympathy cards out. Yet, because I'm waiting till the end of my series. But also, I have to wait till they're, obviously, wait till they're needed. We don't send them randomly, but it's good to have sympathy cards on hand. Hello, Becky from Pennsylvania, my old stomping grounds. Hello, Terry P. Sharon, just received the stamps. Yay, so you can follow along, Sharon. Hello, Charlene, who has the workshop kit, and so does Linda. Hello, Lala's Crafts, Phyllis, nice to see you. Melissa from San Antonio, Texas. She's saying, don't forget to hit that like button. This is card stock. I want to keep this moving here. DSP. Keep saying hello. I'll say hello. Okay, Yvonne is here and Jay from Indiana. All right, DSP layers. We have a three and a quarter inch layer by a three and a quarter. I mean, this is obviously a square, but I'm still writing the edges here. And then we have another layer that is... So this was the um, Waves of the Ocean DSP. Remember the Waves one? Waves of the Ocean. And then this one is the... Uh, by the Bay, which was in your kit. And it's part of the series. By the Bay DSP, and that was three inches by three inches. And then, of course, you back this up. There was a little bit of card stuck in the middle of that, right, with the black. But I don't need to write that because you guys are crafters and you know that part, right? Now we need to take a window sheet, and let's make the window sheet a quarter inch smaller. So let's put that over here so you can still see it on my... So we have window... Is going to be about you know just say just say three uh, two two and three quarters although you can make it a little bigger than that or two and a half but you know two and a half two and three quarters whatever I already have a little piece cut and you can just use your scissors so it should have a little piece here I had it all ready for the video so let's look in my little pile of stuff I was using okay pile pile pile. Maybe it went under here. Maybe it, since it's clear, I can't see it. Hard to make a shaker box without my shaker, without my acetate. 
There it is. It's right there in front of my face. Okay, here's the piece. All right, so now you're going to take, you're going to go like this, and you're just going to, I said, I wrote two and three quarters, but you can make it like two and a half, whatever. Get a pair of scissors and cut it, and just make sure it covers the little window and some extra space. Now, don't use liquid glue for this because glue is going to ooze into your spots. So this time you want to use rolling adhesive, like Seal Plus or Snail or the Tear and Tape. Let me just see what I have laying here. We'll use, we'll use Tear and Tape because it's laying right here. So just put a little piece through the middle like this. You're trying to get the acetate to stick on this part. Make sure it doesn't show through, okay? So you're going to put little pieces around like so. Okay. You don't have to stick that nice because you're going to put something else over the top of it to get it to, to um, hide. You're just getting, all you're doing is getting this to stick onto this piece. This isn't the same as getting it to keep from the, the little sequins to fall through, fall, from falling through. Okay, so you're just doing that. You're just making a little window like that. Okay, so now, now you need to raise this up. Okay, so this is the part where you need to use the foam because we're going to put this over the top of the other piece that we cut out earlier. Looking for it, looking for it. Here it is. Maybe this is it. Nope, that's not it. The little pink piece. I shouldn't have cut these out as we need them because it's like, where do things go? Okay, here we go. So at this point, if you wanted to, if, if before you put the window through it, I'm just giving you some more tips and tricks, you could have put like, you know, a shell pattern or something. Oh, we don't even have a shell pattern. Those dies were just standalone. Okay, never mind that. I was thinking that there was a shell in here, but there's not. Okay, because what I was thinking is if you did have a shell stamp, you could stick the little shell right in there. But, you know, like so you'd have a little shell down there. But I don't think you need to because we're putting sequins in there. And it doesn't matter anyway because I didn't do that. I just think it's kind of cool, though, if you would have those. I think we had the Season of Chic. That's where we had the shells. So these are called foam adhesive strips. That's what these are. Foam adhesive strips. Now, don't put it down here because you want this, you want the sequins to be able to flow all around. You're just kind of hot. You're making a little container under here like this for where your little, here, I can just kind of close this in. What I'm trying to do is get the shells like this or the, not the sequins to stay inside this little container. So sort of like you're making a little hole here like for it to all go into like a little pond there. So now the sequins won't fall out of the little pond, but then you need some of these to make sure your shaker is not wonky. So you want some of those around the edges. And I'm using foam adhesive strips. You all get a quarter of a pack in all of my kits because we always do like almost all the time do a shaker card. In all of my, well, most of my kits, we do some kind of shaker card. So you get like a whole quarter of a pack of these, a lot of these little strips. So be generous with the strips. And then you're going to pull... You're going to pull these all off and get this ready. Now, sequins tend to be a little bit staticky, so I put a little static cling in my bag. My mom's like, what are you doing? She's the one that helps me put together my kits, by the way. She's 90 years old, and I, wouldn't, I would have probably given up on kits this year. I was telling my team I have kit burnout, and, um, but my mom's been helping me make my kits. And so she's like, why do you have a st she, she went to throw She threw my dryer sheet out. I'm like, no, no, my dryer sheet is in there on purpose. And so she, she was like, why is it in there? It's because my sequins have, like, there's a lot of static. And see, there's a lot of static when you work with sequins, and they get, they stick all over the plastic and things, so I put them in there. All right, so now let's go ahead and put this onto the box. Here's your box. You can use liquid glue for that if you want, or tear and tape. I mean, we'll use whatever we want to use. Put, we'll, we'll use tear and tape. This is, this is the part that's on the... So you got to put the sequins on this part before we put the, this part on it. And then we'll decorate it, which will be fun. Just, it just always looks different every time. We'll use glue and dimensionals to decorate it. So you can see why you need all the different kinds of craft supplies for your dimension. And, of course, you wouldn't just be making one of these at one time. You'd be making a bunch of these at once, probably, if you were, if you were giving them out, like party favors or something. Okay, so now... Before you put the lid on, you need to get your little 
sequins. I'm using the ones from clearance. They're called sequins for everything. They're on clearance. I think they're still on clearance. Put a big old pile in there. I don't think I needed that big of a pile, but we're having fun. We're crafters. Let's just try get it to be right in the middle. You have a you have a little jar of these, so you have enough to make a couple shaker cards. And then turn this over. Make sure all the all of those are the adhesives off all those. Now it's gonna it's gonna stick to the plastic a little bit because of static cling. See? Do do do. Shake it up, baby, now. Isn't that cool? So now we have an interactive box. People are gonna love it. It's so fun. And then we just start building all the little pieces onto it. I think people will love to shake it. You're gonna, whenever I get a shaker box or a shaker card, I just can't stop shaking it. So put that little guy on there. And you're going to take the glue and put the bottom ones with the glue, your bottom layers. So let's use this guy as the bottom focal point. And your bottom layers are going to have glue. But then as you, I think that's enough bottom layers and maybe some seaweed. But then the top layers will have, like, dimensionals. The seaweed has to have glue because it can't, you can't use seaweed with, um, you can't put dimensionals on that. It's too small. So just you're kind of layering up and using different textures and things. I'll put that under there. Okay. I should have a small seaweed we can put on the other side. Yep. Small little sprig. Okay, after that, I'm done with the glue. I'd rather use dimensionals anyway. So now we can start using the dimensionals. All right, so you want your small dimensionals and your large dimensionals. And, of course, we need little pearls. So before we get out of, I don't know if you noticed that, but I put the little pearls right onto the acetate. I thought that was kind of fun. So we need the big, we need the these kind of dimensionals. That's the bigger ones. And we need the small ones, okay, depending on which shell we're going to use. So we're going to take our pearls, and we're going to put those right in there. Oops. Now we need the take your pick tool. It should be laying right around here somewhere. Okay, this is when you use the take your pick tool for when you have things like that that flip over. Ooh la la. And it just is more fun to have a little pearl in the centers of those. Okay, and one, oops. Get it before it sticks. Get it before it sticks. Or did that not have a, oh, no, no. Sometimes you leave, sometimes if you don't use this little, little guy, the take your pick tool, you leave the adhesive stuck on the packaging. Oh, he's so cute. And then we're gonna put a big pearl. I'm just gonna use my finger for that one. Right up in there. Put a big pearl on the top. All right, because there's two different size pearls. These are called the flat back adhesive pearls. And now we're gonna just start layering up. So we get one of these little guys. We'll put one of those right over the top of that one. And then we'll use, let's see, that's too dark, not enough contrast. We'll use one of these guys. Oh no, that's too much the same as that one. So let's see how I'm doing it. I'm just deciding as I go, like how to make this. And for the big clams, I'm using the big dimensionals. And for the small clams, I'm using and they could be scallops, whatever you want them to be. Okay, we have gold. We've already done a gold. We're just using different textures. Let's see, what's this one? This one is too dark. And the black one's too dark. So, and I've already used, oh, there we go. There's a perfect one. See that? It's perfect. Why? Because we haven't used Mother of Pearl yet. And then we have an odd number, the five. And voila, we have a card. And now we have, I mean, not a card a box, and now we take our twine. We are using our Knight of Navy twine and our white twine. Twine comes in your kits or ribbons or something, but this one is better with twine. I don't know how much, but you guys are going to want to know, so let's see. Let's try to figure out how much. Let's say this is here. Let's, let's just do this. See, because you want to know how much. We're going to say six, 12, 
And I'm going to see if this is six, I'm going to say 18. Okay, I'll just try 18. And if not, I'll tell you how many inches I need. Okay, I already know when I look at it. Nope. 18, okay. 19, 20. Okay. 22. We're going to say 22 inches, okay? I can tell how much I need just by feeling it, like how much I'm going to need to tie that ribbon. So let's say 22 inches of twine. You don't have to use double twine, but you'll just start to get a feel for, like, leaving the twine on the actual spool and then just taking it off and then tying it and then cutting it off as you need it. You'll get a feel for that. But, of course, you're going to put all your treats in there first. And I'm just I'm just double knotting it so it doesn't fall apart, but I don't have any treats in there yet. But this is one of those boxes I can use for someone's birthday later. I don't need to put the treats in right now. And I'm probably going to take my Valentine treats out of this one. I'm going to go ahead and show you what those look like because the Valentine treats probably don't really go with the colors here. All right, so let's do that. We are. I'm just going to finish saying hi. Hello, Caroline. Glad you came on today. Okay, I'm just going to take in this and show you the Valentine's treats that are in here. But keep in mind, these probably won't be the same treats. Okay, this one I did not double knot, but there you go, that I would keep in here. I just want to show you how much stuff you can fit in this box. So you got your little shaker box, shake, 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 and you can fit some Valentine M&Ms, a York peppermint patty, a mini Snickers, a couple Dove chocolates, and then some. Lots more can fit in there, but I just wanted to show you what I fit in there. And you could put a spool of ribbon, all kinds of stuff. All right, ready to see what else I made as we wrap up? Okay, we're wrapping up. This is what I made ahead of time. I thought this was fun. I used the Warm Welcome. It's the same thing I've been using. I just used with the Paper Pumpkin Kit a lot. That door. I'm trying to find it. Oh, I don't know where the stamp set is, but it, it, there's there's like a, a there's one of these that it has my door is always open for you, or my door is always open to you. And that was a sentiment that I used a lot in my Paper Pumpkin Kit with the key, with the key to your heart. Anywho, I made this because my team member, Rhonda, she made a card with seashells in the background and then this door. This, this piece of wood, by the way, is one of the pieces of designer series paper in your packet. So you can cut out a door. So all of you guys that took my kit last month, my workshop, it's this little piece here. And this door didn't come out, but this one, see, I'm using this piece of wood. It's like that on the other side. All right, so you can make yourself a little door. Then you're going to cut the hole through the door with the scene to make it look out like you're looking into the ocean. Out the door, looking out into the ocean with the sand and the sky. Okay, and then I did your rare a pearl, so rare and precious, and put some little crabs and things on the bottom. So this is called the warm welcome, window, warm, warm welcome bundle. All right, and then we made this today, and let me show you what we made last time. We made heartfelt sympathy cards. I call these my designer series paper cards. We use dandy designs in the background a piece of Coastal Cabana Dandy Designs. And then we used the Stitch Rectangle dies, but I, I gave you pieces of dies that were already cut out in your kits. So you already have those pieces, so you didn't need to die cut those. And so Dandy Designs and By the Bay Designer Series paper for the heartfelt sympathy cards. Oh, glittered organdy ribbon and balmy blue ribbon. That's what we used for those. Also last week... We created these as part of the series. We created these boxes. Okay, so that was fun. And I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be continuing. I mean, if I do continue the series, it's going to be brief because I want to jump into the Easter Bunny series soon. But we've done a lot, as you can see, in the watercolor boxes. If there's still something else you'd like to see, please write me a message or email me because I can still do one, maybe about one more I can squeeze in before Easter Bunny. But then I'm then I'm talking... Then we're talking February, which is a short month, a little bit shorter. So here's the little double fold treat pouch we created. Your pearls are rare and precious. Okay, we created this. I'm thinking maybe like maybe thank you sticky note holders or something, but we can also do all the stuff I was planning on doing with this. We might do a double one. Maybe I'll do, I'll start Easter Bunny series and do a project that I can do with both sets at once. That's what I could do. More lip balm money holders. Well, those, Terry, are part of the Scan and Cut, and unfortunately I don't do Scan and Cut in the Stampin' Up! series because my customers don't have, have Scan and Cuts. 
but that's something I do with the scan and cut tutorials. I'll do something else with those, but not with this series because that takes the scan and cut. So I did thank you cards. And, and this was that we made these are the first ones, rare and precious. Notice how I love to use these little hinge scallops on all my projects. So we created the sand for this one with the distressed gold cardstock. So what I'm thinking I could do is I could do maybe for the last part of the series, maybe sticky note holders or something 3D where I show you how to make it with this. And then I also show you how to make it with the Easter bunny. So we're kind of ending one series and starting with another. That, that, might, be, that might be how I do it. All right. Well, thank you for watching. This is the Paper Chef. Have a great day. And thank you for your comments. Uh, Yvonne and Terry, you're very welcome. See you later. Bye-bye.